Inside America's Boardrooms, the informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with Knowledge Partners, Diligent, PwC, Center for Audit Quality, Spencer Stewart, the Conference Board, and Corporate Board Member. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, the CEO of Diligence Boardroom Resources and the co-founder and editor-at-large of Corporate Board Member Magazine. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the show. Today we're going to be talking about corporate boards and the digital director and joining me and somebody that should know about this topic is Jason Baumgarten who's a partner and serves on the board of Spencer Stewart. So welcome, Jason. Thanks, TK. Nice to be here. So um, I think if we're going to talk about the digital director, probably the first thing we need to do is sort of define that, because I'm sure that everybody has their own definition. So it's important that you define it so we know what we're talking about. So that's your first question. First question. I, TK, the, when boards come to us and ask about, we'd like a digital director, usually there's a whole process of understanding, one, is that a board request or is that a management up through the board request? And what is the focus of that, of what they need on the board? Often it's uh, code for cultural change or business model change or we need growth and we're not seeing it, but it's poised in this notion of a digital director. When we then get into it, the reality is there are digital marketing experts, there are uh, cybersecurity experts, there are GMs of innovative uh, business models, uh, either within their industry or outside of it. So it can mean a lot of different things to a lot of people. Usually what we think about is, first of all, do you want somebody who's had digital disruption in a large scale company where they've been a transformation agent, whether that's as a CEO or as a chief digital officer or just as a GM of the business? Uh, or do you want somebody who's been in a high growth uh, technology enabled business? And then from that, it really comes down to what is the set of functional expertise that they wanna bring to the table and much more importantly, how are they gonna to add to the boardroom conversation around that topic? And that's usually how we start down the path of defining what a digital director means. Um, and usually the most common refrain is these people don't look that senior uh, because folks are used to seeing retired CEOs and CFOs on board lists and very few retired CEOs and CFOs have had the disruptive change agent experience in a large scale business or the rapid growth business uh, that uh, we see in Silicon Valley and other uh, technology hotspots around the globe. Well, that's also why cyber is such a challenge for boards because none of them really had to, you know, when you look at the average age and you look at what happened in their business careers, most of them have not had, you know, serious cyber issues during their tenure. So um, that that is sort of uh, self-explanatory in that sense. So. But what you said is a great segue into my next question because you, you know, at first there was this movement to go find somebody who knew cyber very well or, you know, who was, a, who was um, uh, somebody that was the IT person at, at a particular company and what I would call single focused directors who maybe didn't have management skills, maybe didn't have other things that typically you'd like a board member to have, but the board said, oh, we need somebody that knows cyber. Well, the experiences that boards had with those wasn't great, and I would say, I would say more failed than succeeded in the single focus kind of board member. So um, is that something that you've seen over time as well, and what would you say to somebody in the process of determining the skills to make sure that they don't, aren't disappointed down the road on somebody that can't even serve on any of the major committees because they don't have any experience in that. It's a, it's a great question. And we were, um, at Spencer Stewart, we were quite uh, cautious in defining the digital director role back in, uh, when it started becoming popular, we actually wrote quite a bit about this, you know, somebody has to be a great board member first and a, um, bring particular expertise second. Uh, so that's the first thing is what does a good board member mean in a particular board situation? For a very large board, they may be able to tolerate a narrower scope of influence, 
for a much smaller board, they really need generalists who can play on different committees, play on different roles. So understanding what a great board member contributes in the setting of that particular board at that particular time, and with the CEO that's there and for the foreseeable future, how that CEO wants to engage with their board is really important sort of table stakes to start going down the path of this question of can you, can you um, uh, benefit from somebody with very deep experience in one area. I do think it's important though to differentiate, um, you know, for many years CFOs have been single skill directors and yet somehow that's okay. And yet if somebody is a marketing expert or product expert or a cybersecurity expert, we worry about them. And I think really that comes down to the person and are they a broad business thinker first who has happened to accumulate specific experience and skills in those areas. So it may be somebody who's run a business that had a huge cybersecurity um, uh, you know, portfolio in terms of risk or uh, perspective. It could be somebody who is a product owner in a technology company who is really owning a P&L. And so a lot of it is starting to unpack what that means and being very purposeful about selecting somebody who has the right basket of experiences so that if you're talking about CapEx or um, uh, you know, shareholder relations, they bring the same level of discipline and thought that they will to cybersecurity or anything else. The second thing we're seeing is a lot of these terms are actually, um, the semantics matter. So when we talk about cybersecurity, often what we're dealing with is a culture of how is data shared in a company? What are the ethical parameters that a company has around data and customer data and um, uh, partner data? How, do, how does the risk committee of that company think about technology and data and not just financial risk or political risk? And so those things are very important cultural changes in how the board thinks about it. And the number one thing that those people can bring to the board is an influencing capability to say, this isn't you know, my problem as the cybersecurity expert or the marketing expert, it's our challenge as a board to educate and understand the interrelated aspect of these dimensions. To take marketing as an example, often the real request is how do we become a more customer-centric company that really engages with customers in a one-to-one -one way, but the ask will be somebody who knows social media. It's not really about somebody who knows social media, it's about how can somebody help transform the dialogue in the boardroom about the evolution of that company. Yeah. So Jason, we have about three minutes left, um, and there was something that I, and in a way, you may have answered this question on by, by mentioning the process that you go through in identifying exactly what the company wants. But we both, both our firms have the, I would call it the privilege of, of creating the next gen board leaders, which is um, board members in their 30s and 40s who are on public boards who, um, and the challenges that a young director has on that. And one of the things that we've learned out of that process is that there's, there's two biases. One, the immediately assuming when a young person comes on the board that they are digitally savvy, okay? And in, in some cases that is the case, but not always. And then the reverse of that is the young director feeling that, o that people are only looking to them for the digital <laughs> questions and not the other stuff that they can contribute that they feel that they're in the throes of working on at their own company. So when you, again, I think you've answered it in, in part of it, but w is there anything else that people should be sensitive to when they're going out to look for that digital director, whether that's digital, digital transformation, cyber, whatever, um, and not just assume that a young person you know, will fit the bill? Yeah, there's definitely a phenomenal transformative technology and digital thinkers of all age groups. And so it's important to start with that, you know, table stakes that it's not just that. I do think there are um, benefits from that kind of diversity on a board. And uh, we've certainly seen that play out very positively, but probably where it speaks to the most, and this is a topic, uh, you know, that, that we've chatted quite a bit about is the need for really good onboarding and evaluation, because really it's not getting them to, getting them to the board is really what we talked about in terms of clearly defining what you're looking for and being very precise and answering the question with a great executive, but then making sure that when they show up, they get integrated into the fabric of the board through a great onboarding process and then evaluated not just them, 
but what is their influence on the board and is the board creating the right mechanisms so that they're educating the board in areas they don't know and for areas where they have capacity to learn but they may not have exposure like audit or compensation uh, committee work that they get brought into those uh, processes and evaluated uh, as part of the board evaluation process. So I think there's some great ongoing things that boards can do to make sure they don't just get a great director, but then they reinforce the uh, potential of that director over their service. Well, it's fascinating to hear how your team adds value to a search, and we both know that it's a pretty delicate position in the sense that these positions don't open up very much and you can't make too many mistakes and who are the right people on your board and the investors, that's still the number one issue for all investors is making sure you have the right people in the boardroom. So Jason, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us. I appreciate that. And that will conclude this episode of Inside America's Boardrooms. I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take another look at a critical topic that will help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardroom. Brought to you with knowledge partners, Diligent, PWC, Center for Audit Quality, Spencer Stewart, the Conference Board, and Corporate Board Member, along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance.